My the story I'll help the Mayo story oh, of all times. times. We are going to play. We won district, and we're going to play Bishop Lynch at South Sand. And Bishop Lynch, we start. You know, you start doing the scout report, and you're looking through this tackle sign with University of California. This tackle signed here. This quarterback's going here, and then we're like, yeah, well, boys. "What are we going to do with these guys?" So early on, early on, um, they run a reverse, and it's to. They pull this kid going to California around the corner. This guy was was on the cover of their media guy. Yes. I think I remember yes. this. Yes. Okay. He's like 6'4", 280. There was nobody there. And, and they we it, it off to a wingback that's just like 6'2", who's going somewhere. Yes, and exactly. You know, Mike's got these kids pursuing, baby. They are chasing the right. freaking foot. Yes. And Mayo is like, uh, fellas... You're going the wrong way. <laughs> you might want to come over here. But the thing that stunned me is how fast. Yes. He saw and he reacted, but yeah. there was no fear, yeah. no ounce of hesitation in that kid, and he is flying. And he goes through that tackle's legs, flips, him. flips, him. flips the tackle, flips it, yeah. head over heels, and hits the running back. The tackle's the legs hit yeah. the running the tackle yeah. as he flips. Hits the tackles, the, the running back's legs, and knocks them. One dude. Somebody Might stayed be. down for a while, too. Yes. Yeah, yeah yes. he had to leave the game. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. but that's not the best part of the story. <laughs> Recruiters are coming through. They were at Division three school. And Mary Hart and Baylor is at Bishop Lynch recruiting a kid. Not those two, because they're going Division one, right? And he, they're watching the play, and they're watching the film. And that play comes up, and the guy at Mary Harden Baylor sees the play and says, "Hey, coach, thank you very much." Everything else. goes out to his car, calls me. Hey, does this kid play for you? And I'm like, "Yes, sir, he does." And he says, "I'm on my way." And I said, "You're in Dallas." He says, "I'll be there in five hours." <laughs> sure enough, he pulls in that afternoon, and I pull Milo out. And I said, "Milo, this kid's here to talk to you. He wants you to play football." And he goes. I weigh like 140 pounds, <laughs> you know, and I said, I, I don't think they care, you know, and, and he talked to my, and I'll never forget, he was like, hey, kid, if you want to play, you can play. I mean, he was just, that is the Mayo story, there's no doubt about that. Well, you know, I, I, early in this, and we'll go on to a different one, but early in this, I picked Paul Henry as a linebacker, and I'll tell you why. And, and of course, his boy Porkchop. The last time I was on the field as a coach, when we went to, we handed it off to his son. To, 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 and, and part of it was a good block. Most of it was Porkchop, his boy, saying, "I'm not going to get, mm -hmm. I'm not going to get stopped. We're going to beat these guys," you know, in the holy bowl. Well, we're 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 scrimmaging Poteet. We're scrimmaging Poteet, and we are at Poteet, and it's getting close to the end. We're going we're going a, a wide quarter. And how we were nuts back in the day. You know, we wanted scouts to to not be able to know who was who. <laughs> so we had white pants, white socks, black shoes, blue jerseys, all of us, and gold helmets. And we looked the same. And I wanted those scouts to have a hard time. Well, it's the last play of the game, and I'll tell you why it's the last play of the game in a little bit. So they run a veer, right? They run that kid into the into the into the line, they pull it. Our nine technique, whoever the heck it is, he comes, he bites. And he goes. And, of course, the, the running back goes, quarterback, and the kid plays technique. He goes to the uh, – the safety goes to the to the pitch man, and that quarterback tucks it. He's gone. He's gone. We overran it. He, he cuts across, and he is jetting. And he he puts the brakes on to try to avoid the corner, whoever it was. And then out of nowhere, some kid just nails him. It was like that little child. This kid, they stopped the game. They called people. They thought – and mm -hmm. the coach looks at me and goes, Coach, let's just stop now. Mm -hmm. So we stopped the game. It's over. And, you know, everybody was scared. This kid was really hurt. You right. thought he'd be broke a rib and punctured a lung. It was bad. He oh, was going to lose breath on the was, He couldn't he breathe. breathe. It, was, it was awful. So we get in the bus. We're freaked out, too. We had a good game. We talked to the boys. Sent them home. Well, back then, VHS, right? So so I put the video on, and I'm watching this thing. And I'm trying to watch, you know. So I'm going through, you know, okay. Who's got to dive? Linebacker got to dive. So I'm watching Paul Henry. Paul Henry fills, Paul Henry fills pull him, sticks his face in there. You can see him sticking his nose into that kid. 
And you know that the, the, yeah. nine, the nine tech bit, he was supposed to didn't play technique, try to tackle the fullback. Right. Quarterback kept it and he took off. So I'm thinking it was the safety that tackled this kid or the backside corner or something. So I said, well, that's, that's not him. No, that's not him. That's, and it's killing me because I did a good job of disguising this guy. I can't tell. Well, I finally realized that this kid who tackles him has a, a tape uh, on his wrist. So I'm going through the film, watching for him. Say, wait a minute! The only one who has tape on his wrist is Paul Henry. But he tackled. Well, Paul Henry tackled the, tackle the fullback. The mm-hmm. the There's just no, no way. freaking way you tackle the fullback. <sighs> Paul Henry believed in his mind that as long as he was on the field, they could not score. As wow. long as he was on the field, you could not score. That was his mentality. Wow. Period. And, and he believed, if I tackle this guy, turn around, the ball's still moving, I'm going to go chase him. And he tracked that kid down. Coach, coach, I'm talking 50 yards downfield, coach, and laid this kid out. And it was the most incredible play, single, you know, that I had seen. So that's why Paul – Mike, pull another paper on and see what you're can, can I just say something? Sure. I, I want to – we got to talk about Ray Ramirez, okay? Ray Ramirez played defensive tackle for us. And he was on the on the 1968 undefeated football team, and we are playing the number two ranked team in the city, which is Kennedy. And Kennedy's got this running back by the name of Frank Mata. Hey, they okay, the they him stayed him after him for a while. Okay, and to see Frank play was a privilege. He was fast. He was shifty. Uh, he, he was a just a great player to watch offensively. And we are winning the ball the ball game. 21 to 19, and they've got the ball in the fourth quarter. And sure enough, you know, everybody in the stadium knew that they had to give him the ball. They gave him the ball. He breaks it. He's on his way, on his way. The people from Kennedy are jumping up and down. Uh, kids are running down the sidelines, uh, uh, like you know, from their bench. You know, and everybody just, our heads were dropping. And I happened to look up, and there was a gold helmet coming after him. And one of our kids was trying to hit him off. And when he cut back, he got hit in the back by Ray. Ray, we call him Rhino. And the reason why I call him Rhino is because he could hit. And he hit him so hard that he fumbled the ball in the end zone. We recovered. We got the ball and ran out the time and beat the number two ranked team in the city. Oh, we wow. Were. So I, I, I had told that story over and over to a lot of the teams that I coach about never giving up. Sure. Don't ever think that your pursuit may not be the last tackle that has is going to be done that that play. And for uh, uh, Ray, I had to hand it to him. A- afterwards, he downplayed it. He said, well, I was just playing after him. <laughs> and, and, and then, but I tell you what, Pete Hoffman made a big point to say, yeah, Ray, but you're the only one. Everybody mm-hmm. else had given up. That they could catch somebody like that, mm-hmm. and you didn't, and that's God, you Chris know, Jones. Jones. That was a Chris Jones. Jones. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. apologies to the hundreds of defensive guys that are in my mind. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 Maybe oh yeah, I mean, you can just start listening. Maybe oh, Fabian Castillo, Castillo can hit you, man. Maybe you'll have a good time. <laughs> I, think, I think he had like nine interceptions this year. Yeah, maybe he was always around the ball. Yeah. Maybe it was a bad boy. Uh, AJC Snettles, he's bringing the heat. Yeah. yeah. He would just lay a shoulder into people. Yeah. Crap. Well, hell, well, we were playing. We had a dude named Andy Flores who teaches now. You heard of not. Andy was a bad, Shit. bad boy. Andy would light you up. He, of course, he didn't care who he hit. So if you were in the pile, Andy was going to hit something. And he was just, Andy was mean. No. The, the, no, no, I'm talking. I'm talking pinche. He wanted, he wanted, if he had, if he had a salt packet in his pocket, he'd have, he'd have sprinkled it. Well, Andy was just so if you're so gonna trade that, so, hold on, hold on. <laughs> so trade Andy for Tino Cedillo, man. The name was the same oh. thing, man. Oh, yeah. okay. He was going to hit and hurt. You have the Tino, <laughs> you have the the, the kids. We could do this all night, man. Oh, I'm gonna, <laughs> yeah. Okay, I get two then. I get two. I get two. I want. As you talk, I'm getting more. AJ Barrera. When we had these two safeties, AJ Barrera and Jaime Ramirez. Oh, Jaimito! Oh, oh my not, God! How does Jaime not There's make so the all team? So Jaime was oh my vicious. God. You know, Jaime is pitching right now for God. I'm going to screw this up. Hey, King, uh, Corpus Christi, Corpus, hey, Christi. Corpus Christi, and he played. He pitched against UT the other day. Oh, on TV, uh, yeah. Jaimito, he is a 
Jaimito is a bad boy. Jaimito makes the All Star game here at the yeah, HB All Star game, and those announcers cannot stop talking about this kid. <laughs> you can hear the popping. You know, it's inside the dome, and Jaimito would just, oh my gosh, he would just hit you. Was, I remember AJ yeah. that year because Jaime graduated, right? And we played Antonian when they had the big kid quarterback and. They were all, I mean, they were good. And A.J. made the quarterback just, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm not going to run the ball. I mean, they were trying to run it. We had A.J. locked down on him, and he just come up, pop him, pop him, pop him. Third quarter, it was time. Hole opens, running back, come, or quarterback goes through the season, just stop. What you got on the day? Okay, guys, here we go.